Welcome to The Kitchen Table, a conversation about faith, music, and culture. Join Shine.fm's ministry director, Brian McIntyre Utter, and his 18-year-old son, Jake, around the table for this week's chat. Welcome to The Kitchen Table. This is episode number 28 and a new year. Welcome to 2019. Yeah, 2019. My name is Brian. And I'm Jake. And we're so glad that you're along today. Did you make any New Year's resolutions? Uh, I've kind of given up. I just... Kind of given up on life? Well, I mean, what? it's just like you make one and then you just kind of don't stick to it. So, yeah, not really. You're not a goal setter? Uh, no. I don't really make resolutions either. Just try to be a better person. Yeah, that's about it. Yeah, that works for me too. If you're unfamiliar with the show, we should probably start there. We have been doing this show now a little over a half a year every week, and mm-hmm. we discuss a faith question. And the reason that we started this was uh, Jake was finishing up high school, getting ready to go off to college. Now he's going to college in the same town where we live, so he's nearby and I see him every week. And this gives us an opportunity to see each other every week. I wanted more time as he was leaving the Mm -hmm. house to have more faith conversations. And we've had these over the years. They've just not been organized and literally across the kitchen table because we don't have a table in our kitchen. Uh, Nonetheless, uh, we decided to do this more as a way of encouraging you to have those faith conversations with your kids, whether they be children or teenagers or even young adults, to continue parenting them and discipling them as a parent to a child. And so that's why we started this uh, podcast. One, it gives us an opportunity to talk about these Mm -hmm. faith questions. Two, to share that with you as well. So we start off with the faith question. We move into a segment that we call... Music Matters. We talk about music because we both love music very much. And then we go move on to Culture Shock, which is where we take a um, trending topic or just a topic of its day of today. And I have some interesting things that have happened, you know, around the Christmas season I thought I'd share during Culture Shock. Okay. So a couple of different things we'll put in there. Okay, so the uh, faith question for today, I was you know, racking my brain to come up with something to talk about. It's a, it's a new year. We just, of course, celebrated New Year's Day earlier this week, as you're probably listening to this, perhaps on the day it launches. But nonetheless, uh, a lot of new laws go into effect at the new year. And uh, one of those laws has happened over the past several years in certain states, and that is the legalization of either medicinal marijuana or recreational marijuana. We just had the state of Michigan on January 1st, Mm -hmm. recreational marijuana legalized, also the state of Vermont and Washington, D.C. They joined Colorado, who was the first in 2012, as well as the states of California, Massachusetts, Maine, Nevada, Oregon, Washington, and Alaska. Those are the states where recreational marijuana is now legalized. Mm -hmm. So the faith question, and it can be worded in a million different ways, but how do we respond as Christians, followers of Christ, now that many states are legalizing marijuana for recreational use? And as a parent, and again, it comes up to parenting your child when they say, well, that's legal. You know, again, a lot of these states put an age limit on it. It's typically 21, uh, just like alcohol consumption Mm -hmm. in many states. And a lot of states, I think, are doing this because they need the revenue and they can tax it and control it. Is taxing it worth the social problems that come along with it? That would be my question. Not going to talk about that side of the issue today. We just want to talk about how do we respond as followers of Christ? How do we respond as Christian parents in communicating this to our children? Um, Now that it is recreational, they can't use it. Maybe you have a, a young adult who is now available to them. And they're asking questions about it. Those kinds of things. Thanks for listening to The Kitchen Table. We're a father-son podcast talking about faith, music, and culture. So we're going to dive into this one today and try to figure this out. Mm -hmm. We rarely come up with a a true answer to this. It's more just a further discussion and more questions. And again, you can totally disagree with us. You have permission to do that. Uh, This is just coming from our perspective. With all of this marijuana slash weed talk that we have, like, I just want to know why. (laughs) Why what? Why... Why did it start? How did it start? Like, I just don't get why it's a thing because it, it affects you in your mental state. So, like, why would people want to smoke it if you can have serious harmful effects just from, like, because you don't know, you don't remember what you're doing a lot, and it's because it affects your brain. So why do people, I just don't understand why people want to smoke marijuana. I don't know the answer to that And one. I can understand, like, the medical aspect of it. If someone has really bad anxiety and that calms them down, I've heard of that. And me personally, I agree that that is 
okay. I think that that should be fine. And like I've heard some cases of uh, like cases of Parkinson's and I think dementia really like smoking weed has helped them. That is correct. Yeah. From what we know, medical things. But when it is medical, I think it should be allowed. And and again, under a physician's Mm -hmm. guidance, it has to be prescribed. It has to be monitored by a physician oversight by the physician, you have extreme pain, or there's no other medical remedies that have proven effective in whatever condition that is, then, you know, scripture doesn't say anything like that, you know, you you know, but again, Mm -hmm. under a doctor's care, that's a priority. Many states legalizing it now for personal use for adults 21 and over. So this has led us as Christians to have all these discussions and these debates so what does the Bible say specifically about marijuana? Does it talk about marijuana? I never read anything about marijuana in the Bible. Well, a lot of the argument for those that are, are pro-marijuana, they cite Genesis one twenty nine, and God is saying to Adam there, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of all the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. So how many of us are ingesting marijuana for food. I mean, you got edibles. Okay, now here, I knew you'd bring that up. I'm just saying, like... I read a blog on the Gospel Coalition by Joe Carter that says, is recreational marijuana use a sin? He says, presumably, no one adds marijuana to brownies. It's famous for marijuana brownies, of course, Mm -hmm. because it improves the flavor. The reason to add this particular plant to food stuff is because of the effect on the senses other than taste. It's to get high. Right. It's not food. Yeah, it's not. There like is a, a different flavor. purpose yeah. to it. Yeah, it's more of like a, a some people do it for a prank. So, I certainly hope not. Well, I've heard of people who do it. Thanks for listening to The Kitchen Table. We're a father-son podcast talking about faith, music, and culture. We can relate to what scripture talks about when it comes to alcohol. Mm-hmm. Marijuana is not mentioned in scripture. People will point that out. So the question we need to ask is, do we find in the Bible something that goes along the same line of the recreational use for marijuana? And the answer is yes. The Bible specifically talks about intoxication by drinking alcohol. So then you have to determine what constitutes the word intoxication. You know, the Bible permits the use of alcohol in moderation. Will it also permit the small amounts of marijuana to be consumed before becoming, so to speak, intoxicated by marijuana. Again, we go back to this uh, blog from Joe Carter that I read. It says that uh, alcohol, it takes four drinks for the average size woman or five drinks for the average size man to become, quote, intoxicated. Mm-hmm. For marijuana, it only takes four puffs. Mm. So if your intent on ingesting marijuana in any form isn't to have an intoxicating effect, then why are you bothering even to do it? Yeah, I don't know. What is the intent? What benefits are you seeking? Now, a lot of those will say, well, it's the medicinal purposes of it. Yes, under a doctor's care, a specific dosage prescribed to you. Yes. The question that I come up with, with the legalization of recreational marijuana Mm -hmm. in the States, what do they do about smoking and driving? Because, I mean, if people are smoking... You can't get pulled over and you can't get a DUI. Yeah, a DUI. But I'm just saying people will argue with that fact of, I can smoke a cigarette and drive. Why can't I? It just seems but that... But nicotine doesn't yeah, have that I know. kind of and I'm saying, response to but the I mental just, capacity. I don't understand why the states would let them smoke weed if that affects their driving. Like, you're just setting up for a lot more... Well, why do DUI? we allow alcohol? I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, I, yeah. I have a friend, in fact, he's your friend too, he's pastors in Colorado. When they legalized recreational use in Colorado, everyone was watching. Now, of course, Colorado, they did it, bottom line, even though they probably won't tell you this, they did it because they wanted to tax it and control it, and they wanted the tax money. That's why most states are doing this. So the state of Illinois is considering it right now. More than likely, it's going to happen this year. There'll be a vote on the ballot sometime this year. It's interesting, now that we have several years of open recreational use in the state of Colorado, to look at the effects. I was out there visiting him a few years ago, and... He said that the amount of homelessness in the state of Colorado has skyrocketed. Yeah, I can believe it. Homeless people are flooding to Colorado because they can get marijuana. Yeah. I find that real interesting. The marijuana has the addictive, like nicotine, you know? Well, they say it's not as addictive as nicotine. 
And that's one of the arguments from the pro-marijuana side of things. But then why do so many people, when they start smoking, keep going? They, I feel like it's not addictive in the source, like how nicotine is in cigarette. I think it's the feeling. Oh, yeah. Because there's what's the, the hormone that makes you like, it's like the addictive hormone in your brain. I don't know, but there is one. I can't, na- I can't think of the name right now. But when you are like happy or doing something that makes you feel... Dopamine. Ha- yes, dopamine. The dopamine releases in your brain. And I think that's what happens when you smoke weed. Well, dopamine gets releases when you eat Oreos. Well, too. yeah, but I'm saying like you get addicted to it. That's why you keep, oh, you're like, oh, this is good. This makes me feel good. And I think that's what's getting people addicted to marijuana. I don't think it's anything in the marijuana. It's just the feeling of being high. Thanks for listening to The Kitchen Table. We're a father-son podcast talking about faith, music, and culture. The argument also of the effects of caffeine versus marijuana. Yeah. John Piper, love him. He uh, wrote uh, something several years ago now. I think he wrote it when Colorado legalized things, but he said that marijuana temporarily impairs the reliable processing of surrounding reality. Caffeine ordinarily sharpens that process. Mm -hmm. Most caffeine drinkers hope to stay awake, do their job more reliably, and drive more safely. It is certainly possible to abuse caffeine, but as a natural stimulant, it is the most commonly used not as an escape from reality, but as an effort to interact responsibly with reality. Unlike caffeine, marijuana is not generally thought of as an empowering drug that enables you to be more alert, a more competent employee. Rather, for most users, it is a recreational escape, which produces diminished accuracy of observation, memory, and reasoning. You see studies all the time that come out that talk about how brain cells are destroyed with prolonged use. Yeah. Piper also says it may have lasting negative effects on the mind's ability to do what God created it to do. Mm. And of course, whenever we talk about a substance and why, the why of avoiding this, we always go back to scripture again and point out, most importantly, the bottom line, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 6 says, or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own. You are bought with a price. So glorify God with your body. Now, contrary to what non-Christians will say and think about themselves, we do not have the ultimate authority over our body to do what we want to do with it. Our body belongs to Christ. Our body is the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. Our body is to be used to glorify and to honor God. So if you uh, choose to drink too much, smoke marijuana, at a high level, you need to ask yourself, does this decision make Jesus look good? Yeah. And there'll be people out there disagreeing, shaking their head at me right now. Oh, it's no big deal. But ask that question. Another thing that we have to remind ourselves that scripture talks about how a clear mind helps us glorify God in our actions. One of the verses before the verses we just shared from 1 Corinthians 6, the body is meant for the Lord and the Lord for the body. We must strive not to dull or diminish or weaken our God-given physical and mental capacities to glorify and serve God. Piper talks about it in that article I mentioned early. We have to be ruthlessly clear-headed. And that's what scripture talks about. We bring this up literally every time that we talk. It's the the identity and that you are you're an advocate for God. Like right. you are your witness. You are yeah, you're a witness. You're the image of God and the way you treat yourself and the way that you look towards others. They'll be like, "Oh, so that's what Christians are doing nowadays." Mm-hmm. Like and I feel like Christians already have that bad stigma of being hypocritical and being, "Oh, they have to be perfect so they think they're better than us." And that's not right. I mean, we're humans too. We make mistakes, but we we know that we have forgiveness because we believe in God. For me personally, I don't ever plan on smoking weed. And it's more of the fact because I am a witness of God and I don't want to ruin my look right. for that. Right. Thanks for listening to The Kitchen Table. We're a father-son podcast talking about faith, music, and culture. Christians need to lead by example. What sort of witness for Jesus do we give when we join with the world in recreational use of a drug whose purpose is to induce a state of passivity and stupor and diminished accuracy and mental yeah. observation and memory and basic reasoning power? We have to ask the right question. We ask, what's wrong with it? Why shouldn't I? How far can I go and still not sin? That is the craziest question you could possibly ask yourself. 
Mm-hmm. It's like, how far can I bend this before it yeah. breaks? Yeah. You know, maybe we should be asking ourselves, will it promote the cause of Christ? Will this activity lead me and others to treasure Jesus above all else? Will it help me fight the fight of faith with greater success? Will it sharpen and intensify my knowledge of Christ and my commitment to glorify him in all things? These are the questions we need to ask ourselves. Mm -hmm. A a Christian writer by the name of Guy Hatcher stressed the need to build ourselves around the standards of God. Said this, regardless of what generation you are from and what mindset you have, it is important for you to understand that God has already defined your legacy and called you to a specific purpose here on earth. He has also blessed you with his legacy through the covenant made with Abraham. All you have to do is claim it. So as far as the need for instant gratification goes, consider yourself served. Mm. Find that instant gratification in God and the legacy he's established for you. Thought that was a great thought there. So new laws are enacted. That changes nothing. Mm -hmm. Andy Crouch, in an article with Christianity Today, talked about new laws like legalizing recreational use of marijuana. He says it all comes down to this. Drugs like pot have no place in a Christian lifestyle. Why should Christians flaunt their freedom in matters of such grave consequence for the poor? It is hard to imagine a more direct application of Paul's admonition to the Corinthians from 1 Corinthians 8 9. Be careful, however, that the exercise of your rights does not become a stumbling block to the weak. Is marijuana a cultivated celebration of the created world, one that enhances and sharpens image bearing in all of its dimensions? Or does it merely substitute for the consolations and comforts of life lived truly and honestly before God and other people? In our cultural context, the answer seems pretty clear. And the way to true freedom is clear as well. Mm. So again, this is just an opportunity for us, speaking to parents right now, to further educate and disciple our children. Because all these laws get passed that are counter to our Christian faith. And we need to use these as opportunities to explain the truth of God. And trust me, there's going to be other people out there trying to twist the truth of God to justify this. No. They don't see anything wrong with it. This happens all the time. You know, we can go into a million different issues, but it comes back to the truth of God, and we stand on that. The only external power to which you should yield conscious control or under whose influence you should come is the Holy Spirit of God. Ephesians 5.18 And do not get drunk with wine or high on marijuana, if you will, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. I hear this little joke all the time. It says, don't get high on weed, get high on the Holy Ghost. <laughs> I just thought I'd plug that in. Well, that wraps up uh, the faith question for this week. Uh, Again, hopefully it provides you some answers. Hopefully it uh, spurs further conversations with your kids because trust me, they're going to be talking about this Mm -hmm. in school. The the school will then start talking more and more about this because of the legalization of the recreational use. I remember when I was in middle school, they did a drug prevention. Yeah. So I don't know if they'll change that because... Well, it's still prevented because they're not 21. Oh, yeah. It's sort of like alcohol. Are they it's gonna, legal up, you know, over yeah. the age of 21. I just wonder if they're going to keep saying the bad things of it. They need to. They keep saying the bad things about alcohol. Yeah, I guess they do. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so that wraps up the faith question. We're going to move into Music Matters. So Music Matters is a, a segment we do. Again, Jake mentioned at the earlier part of the show that we love music. Uh, it's a big part of our lives, yeah, a big do. part of our worship. And so what we do during Music Matters because I live in the music radio world, I think I know a lot about music. But, but you don't. I do, but... But I know more. You know... Well, I know a lot of stuff you don't know. But Valid. you know a different side yes, of the world, perhaps? It's like a different corner of music. Yeah. And so what we do is I bring a new song to the table. Jake brings a new song to the table. And then after we've shared those, then we go back. I go back to a oldie but goldie. There you go. And pull one out because I've done this throughout his life where he's stolen my iPod when he was younger and, and listened to my music. and, and got some good sticks, Scorpion, Ariel Speedwagon. The old 80s rock stuff. Yeah. New song this week, Joel Vaughn. You know Joel? Is that the guy from For King and Country? No. No. It's Joel, but Smallbone, not Vaughn. Oh. Joel Vaughn. No, I do you not. You don't know him? Okay. Pop artist, Christian pop artist. I believe he's from California. I don't know. I got to look that up. But uh, he's on a record label that's in California, and we play him a lot on our Spark channel. So he has a new song out, and it's called More Than Good Enough. 
and you can kind of think about what this mm-hmm. song is going to yeah. be about. It's a great pop song, got a great message, and Joel's going to talk a little bit about it. More Than Good Enough is a song for those of us who feel like we're broken, jacked up, and we just can't get our act together. So all of us, God sent his son Jesus on our behalf to stand in the gap for us, and it's by his grace and his power alone that we have been made right in the sight of God. We have been made more than good enough through his son, Jesus. So, hope you guys blast this tune. I hope you love it. Uh, And I hope it speaks to your heart today. Rest in that grace that through Jesus, you are more than good enough. So here's a short little clip called More Than Good Enough. It's Joel Vaughn. I probably need to listen to that. He's got a lot of great music out yeah. there. If you have kids that are into the pop stuff, that's a good alternative right there. Yeah. And the reason, again, that we only play a short little clip for you is because we don't have permission to play the full song because we podcast <laughs> this. Just wanted to point that out. Because some yeah. people are like, why don't you play the whole song? So my song for the week is called Rising Sun. Um, it's by all sons and daughters. And this band has a lot of good worship songs. And the reason I found this song, we got a new worship pastor at our church. Uh, sorry, creative arts pastor. They changed the name. And he picked this song and I had never heard it before. And the lyrics, it's just talking about how God is higher than the rising sun. And it's just like mm. how powerful he is. And so when we were first playing it, I had like the first time I heard it, I was like, wow, these words are just so deep because you don't think of like, oh, he's actually bigger than the rising sun. Like he's always over that. And so here's a little bit of Rising Sun by All Sons and Daughters. I know All Sons and Daughters. They don't get a lot of mainstream Christian radio play, but I I know who they are. I I love their music and highly respect them. They're really good. Okay, so we've done the new stuff. Now we go back in time. We have a time warp sound effect. (laughs) Uh, This one's going back to 1993, the number seven song from 1993 by a group that is probably one of the longest running groups in the history of Christian music. I mean, they started as a Southern gospel group, I think, in the 60s and continued and transformed into a pop group. And they're still out there. They have the classic group that tours. And they started, like, Mm. I think one of the founding members' son sort of took over and went. I don't know if they're still going or not. But the Imperials is the name of this group. You've never heard of them. Nope. All right. I remember the first cassette I ever bought was a compilation from Kmart. Had an Imperial song on really? it. That was my first introduction to them. And hmm. then I bought some old eight tracks from them. So, yes, I'm aging myself. But Are this one, are? 1993, the number seven song, it's the Imperials taking your love for granted. I was taking your love for granted. I don't want to live like it did before. Taking your love for granted anymore. That's a good one. They've been around a while. They've done all kinds of different styles of music, and uh, all of it's been good. So yeah. super talented. They still do a lot of the harmonies because they have the. It's a, I remember, vo- it's a vocal group. Yeah, no, I remember we went to go see Striper, and I was right. like, "Why are they doing rock music with harmony?" And you were a like, lot of '80s did harmony. Well, no, and I'm just I'm kind of mad at myself because I'm a music minor now, and I love harmony. I just didn't appreciate it back then. Like if I watched them now, I'd probably be like, "Oh my word." Good, tight harmonies. Mm, Herman Morales was the bass in that group. Okay, so that wraps up Music Matters. Now we're going to move into a segment we call Culture Shock. So in Culture Shock, we discuss what's happening in culture. A couple different things. We, We like to see, especially if something's penetrating across the spectrum of culture mm-hmm. uh, and and people are taking notice and it hits the news and, and Christians are speaking out. Uh, a couple different things. If you saw the annual Christmas message from Queen Elizabeth, every Christmas, the monarch in England does a mm-hmm. Christmas message. It started out, I forget who was the first one to do it. It was probably Queen Elizabeth. No, it was before. Because oh. this started in radio. I remember her, you know, seeing movies of her father doing this Christmas message. Oh, gotcha. So, she's done one. Of course, uh, she's been queen forever. She's like 92 now. <laughs> um, but her Christmas message had a lot of Christian undertones to it, which were great. Really? Yeah. She said that the message of Christ of peace on earth, goodwill toward all is never out of date and needed as much as ever. I thought that was great. Yeah. 
She said this, the Christmas story retains its appeal since it doesn't contain theoretical explanations of the puzzles of life. Instead, it's about the birth of a child and the hope that birth brought to the world. Only a few acknowledge Jesus when he was born. Now billions follow him. That's awesome. Then she goes on in her speech, and she's thanking those that serve in the military. She's talking about what happened in the royal family that year, the marriages and the births and those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And then she said, even the power of faith, which frequently inspires great generosity and self-sacrifice, can fall victim to tribalism. Even the most deepest held differences, treating the other person with respect as a fellowship being is always a good first step toward greater understanding. So just a lot of great things that she brought out in that Christmas message about the birth of Christ. And I thought it was great that she did that. Um, Another one, and you'll like this one, they put out a list. You know, when the new year happens, they have all those top 10, top 20 lists, Uh highest this list, whatever. Well, they put out the highest box office earning star, which means not the money they actually made for making movies, but the amount of money that their movies made during the year 2018. And for 2018, do you know who it was? Chris Pratt. It was not Chris Pratt, but he was on the top five list. See, I thought you were going to guess Chris Pratt. Um, Number one is also an outspoken Christian actress. I don't know. Letitia Wright, Black Panther. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah she yeah, was yeah, in yeah. Black Panther. She was also in The Avengers, Infinity War. She was in Ready Player One. Uh-huh. So yeah. all the her movies from the last year. I didn't year, know she was an outspoken Christian. She is. Huh. Her movies last year made one point. Five five billion dollars. Chris Pratt was also on the list. I think he's the number four at one point one billion. Hmm. But on the days leading up to the new year, she actually was sending out tweets giving thanks to God, and she sent out reference to Malachi three ten that says, "See if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will be no room enough to store it." And so she tweeted, "Twenty eighteen. I can't even put into words my gratitude for all that has happened this year. This scripture sums it up." God opened a floodgate of blessing. I am awe. Now, she's done past interviews where she's talked about her faith. I'm I'm surprised you haven't read these. I haven't, no. She admitted that in a previous interview that she once struggled with glorifying acting. So before her successful year, she actually took a break from acting. Really? To focus on her Christian faith. She says this, I was going through a lot, a very difficult time in my life, and I just needed to take a break from acting because I really idolized it. So I came off from it and went on a journey to discover God and my relationship with God, and I became a Christian. It really just gave me so much love and light within myself. I felt secure, and I felt like I didn't need validation from anyone else or from getting a part. My happiness wasn't dependent on that. It was dependent on my relationship with God. She says, I'm certain in who I am, and I'm really grateful. I'm not perfect, she continued. Especially as a Christian, you're not perfect. But you're walking every day and trying to just stay connected. And yeah, it's helped me a lot. So I'm very grateful. Just that testimony shows how how rewarding God is because she sacrificed her career by taking a break off. And then God rewarded Being her. Being faithful. I mean, yeah, she was faithful through everything. And she stepped back from what she wanted and she thought was best. She talked about being in a Bible study and how she was in a very dark place and through the Bible study helped her immensely in that. She goes, I pride myself on keeping it the same as when I came into acting to not just change the lane and take everything just because it may be a big name or a big budget. Yeah. She asks, am I right for this part? Is this what I should be playing? If something feels off in my spirit, I know that God's way of saying you shouldn't do this. I think it's incredible that we have, you know, actors and actresses, sports figures, people that are underneath the celebrity umbrella who are true to their Christian faith and God is rewarding them through that faithfulness. Two of the five top film earners, so to speak, are outspoken Christians. Are outspoken Christians. So congratulations to them. You see how God is faithful when we are faithful to him. Yeah. I guess that's the message of culture shock today. Yeah. I'm really like in awe about that because that's awesome. If you are faithful, God will... And it might not be what you want. That's the thing. But you, if you are faithful, God has a good plan for your life. And that wraps up Culture Shock. And it also wraps up the end of our show here, The Kitchen Table. Thank you so much for tuning in and being a part of the conversation. Remember, if you want to continue to be a part of that conversation, how you do that is by becoming a member of the Kitchen Table Facebook group. You can find it on Shine.fm's Facebook page. Yep. 
and uh, we can continue the conversation there. And you could also share if you have a faith question you would like us to tackle. We would love to do that. Find us on the Shine.fm Facebook page under the Kitchen Table group. Have a great 2019, first episode of the year. It's a wrap. Thanks for listening to The Kitchen Table on the Shine.fm Podcast Network from Olivet Nazarene University. Be sure to subscribe for more content delivered each week on faith, music, and culture.